okay today we'll be discussing about two most important configuration files uh, in splunk called props.conf and transform.conf okay so what i am planning is like in this video and in next uh, few videos we'll be discussing about their different uh, use cases one by one okay now in this video i will be mainly considering on the basic stuff where uh, how we will see how we can set it up the props.conf what are the different different uh, syntax you can do for setting up the stanges in props.conf as well okay where we need to place the props.conf mm, we'll see that okay now props.conf is a file uh, which can appear in any stages of the data processing so um, it is really important to know the data uh, the different stages the data is going through we will be discussing that and transform.conf you can think about as a supporting file of the props.conf okay we'll, we'll see about that one as well uh, in upcoming videos now as, as i said props.conf is a configuration file where in which you can configure the the different configuration that can that can be present in any of the data processing stage so let us discuss about um, what are the different data processing stages we have okay so now if you see this is a typical uh, life cycle of a data where from the source the data is coming to a the data is feeding to the splunk right through splunk inputs right now it is it's a stream of data but the input phase what is happening is splunk generally do not have any idea of different different event breaking rules or it do not have any idea about the events at all okay what it does is it's basically assigns some of the attributes to the overall data and those attributes are host source source type and also the character set and also you can mention the index in which the uh, data will be indexed okay so these are like overall characteristics it can apply to the input input data now when it moves from the input data to the parsing phase what it does there it is basically breaking those inputs the raw events with different different events based on certain rule event breaking rules okay and also it transforms those events before before it in index in transform means suppose if you have credit card information right and you want to mock that information before it is getting indexed it is doing in this parsing phase okay now after that the indexing is happened based on that index name specified the indexing is happens and then you can you are basically searching the data through search processing language right this is the overall uh, overall life cycle of this data now based on this there are certain splunk components server components you can map it to that's like um, we know like we have different different components called universal forwarder indexer heavy indexer search it right we'll see different different setup like we can have our universal forwarder for our input only right for our input phase um, only and indexer is doing the other stuff like parsing indexing and search these three so this three phase so can be done by indexer input can be handled by universal forwarder or we can have our setup something like this heavy forwarder is doing the first two phase input and parsing as you know heavy forwarder has the capability of parsing as well then indexer is doing the indexing and search okay or we can have our universal forwarder as an input then indexer is doing the parsing and indexing then we have a separate search head for search purpose spl running right now we can also we can also have this setup where we have universal forwarder doing the input heavy forwarder doing the parsing then indexer is uh, doing the indexing and also supporting the searches or we can have this setup where each and everything has been I mean, is, separate right universal forwarder for input heavy forwarder for parsing indexer for indexing and search it for search right now based on your setup this props.conf file location will be determined because and also the configuration you are doing it suppose you are doing some configuration for your input phase let's say you are setting up some character set in the props.conf right so you basically you are setting up a configuration for your input phase now input phase if you if you have let's say i have this setup where i have universal forwarder for my input and indexer for other stuff then i have to place my props.conf inside my input folder 
inside the universal forwarder okay now props.conf and similarly if you are doing let's say during the search phase okay you would you can also uh, uh, give some configuration which basically governs the search phase okay that is also you can do like just like the field extraction and those stuff that is also you can do okay uh, in the props.conf as well we'll see in later videos so in this case the props.conf file location will be the server component which is basically supporting the search suppose i have this one in this case it will be in search head if i have this combination in this case it will be in indexer okay this is how it works now props.conf file generally uh, has this location if i go to splunk home etc and then go to system this is the system wide wise props.conf okay and instead of default folder you will see a props.conf okay now to have your own inputs or own configuration system wide you can place your props.conf inside the local folder okay just like this okay now if you want your props.conf to be very much specific to an app then you can put it inside the etc apps then corresponding apps default folder suppose for me the app is tmdb right and i can put this inside this tmdb default folder okay this is also possible now let us discuss about props.conf structure okay so for that what i'll do i'll go to splunk home etc system and then i'll go to the default and i'll open this props.conf props.conf okay i'll be opening with code now if you see a typical props.conf has this kind of setup where it has a uh, default stanza so basically any conf file you will see in in uh, splunk it will have this kind of structure it will have a stanza okay it will have a stanza and inside that stanza it will have key value pair key value pair okay so similarly in props.conf also now if you see in any crops props.conf file there will be a default stanza okay which basically holds the global settings okay now there could be other stanza specific to your requirements or specification okay now i'll just talk about default stanza first then we'll see how other other stanza uh, looks like so in default stanza as i said there are global settings it is it, it is having right now if you you can have more than one default stanza as well something like this okay mm, so maybe I'll, I'll save this file somewhere so that the color coding will be activated okay so i'll select all files demo dot conf okay so now if you see let's say in my default first default stanza i give q1 and the value one okay second default stanza i give q1 and the value is value two okay so at the end of the day when splunk applies this configuration and uh, to the the, the data processing pipeline right so if it finds more than one default stanza in the in your file it combines all okay and now sorry it should be key to value two key to value two okay now so ultimately the ultimately the default will be looking like the default stanza will be looks like this default then key one value one and then key two value two okay this will be the ultimate default one now let's let's think about it when i have a multiple defaults and i have provided the same key okay with a different value let's say value three in this case the last occurrence of that key will be taking precedence in this case the ultimate final default will be looking like key one equals to value three so you have to keep you have to be remember remember this one so that's why it is always better to use a single default stanza in your props.com file okay now for other stanzas okay 
For other stanzas, the stanza could be either for source type or for host or for source. Okay, so we are talking about three things here source type. source type based source based or or host base okay now let us talk briefly about these three things because if you have seen in any splunk index right these three fields are automatically assigned to each and every event right now now that happens when we discussed before right in the input phase splunk applies this source source type and host by default with the overall data and the parsing phase when it is breaking the events right that time also this each for each and every event is assigned this source source type and host value as well okay now source means that the so the host means basically the server from which the log files are coming up source you can think of it the file name suppose you are you are monitoring some log files right in that case the source will be the file name of that log file you can think of it and source type is the what kind of file it is whether it's a log file whether it's a json file csv file what kind of file it is okay now based on that maybe you can you can try to create different different co uh, configuration for that now when in your props.conf right when you you have make, you are making some configuration for either source type level or the source level or the host level based on that the syntax for that uh, stanza name will be changing so for source type it is direct name so you can give you can give just the source type name here okay so that means if you see by any kind of you can create any any kind of custom source type here right combination key value pair so that whenever you are mentioning that source type for that data source what will happen it will apply props that splunk will apply those settings for that data okay suppose for an example if you see um, for log 4j right so this is the source type settings splunk has given so if you see that's why this log 4j it's coming up over here when you have a when you want to add some data i'll, I'll see, show you here if i go to settings add data right and upload let's say i'll just upload some uh, of the files maybe in the desktop we'll just see demo.conf next so here if you see select source type is there right here you can see log4j okay so this settings is coming from the by system wise default okay the system wise whatever has been defined here from here it is this this settings are coming up now based on your data these settings will be applied to your data okay so so this this settings will be applied i think mainly for the event breakups generally okay now same thing for source also you can set up some uh, con uh, configuration but here the creation of that uh, stanza will be different so you have to give the name source then double colon then the source name here okay and the source name here so okay so this this is for source and host also similar stuff so you have to be careful on this part whenever you are looking doing for the host and source also um, you can do it for you can define your own rule here as well through this one rule then double clone the rule name okay like this this is also possible so this are the apart from default these are the different kinds of uh, stanza you can create in props.conf now for source right now for source you can use some kind of regex as well here okay uh, as as you know splunk support uh, pca regular expression right so you can you can put regex so that the this particular settings can be applied for more than one source as well similarly for host as well okay this 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 can be done for host and source now think about it when i have a source two different source settings okay 
source and this source and suppose through some regex it is ultimately boiling down to a okay that's the 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 server the server name let's say okay i'm just giving example some some regex this is some example regex there is no extra meaning for these dots and all i just i've just given this one okay and by some meaning this server name is coming as z okay now let's think about this scenario where i have defined a key here let's say key one equals to well one okay now key one equals to let's say val 2 i have given here now if you see both the source has both the source has defined a same key value here okay right now in this case for the final key one value will be according to the ascii preference based on the source name okay suppose this this boils down to a then the key one ultimate value of the key one will be value one okay now we can override this one by using a priority if i say priority equals to three here okay and priority equals to five here in this case the key one value will be val two because even though the z is coming after a as alphabetically ordered but as this priority is greater than the this tanja so key one value will be preferred this one okay now this could happen with the source with the host level as well now okay now now in this case key one equals to val three in this case you cannot make with the priority that that's uh, that doesn't work so to be very careful on that part now in this case what is happening is you have to remember this precedence order okay so host always decides the source type okay source type and source always have better precedence than host and source type okay so if i if i just have this one so it is basically this one right so source will be having the highest pri highest priority then host then source type that means if you have this kind of combination then this value will be the value of the key one will be either val1 or val2 because both are belongs to source now source a and source z has priority uh, source z has priority greater priority than source a right in this case the ultimate value of the key one will be val2 okay so you have to remember this one now let us let us continue in your host okay so as i said you can give the regex right you can also mention like whether you want to match by case sensitive or not okay in this case what you can give you can give this one so after question mark then a dash okay then i okay and then the source name let's say demo so what will happen it will only match it will only match the host name demo it will not match the capital demo and all but the same settings if i do it without the case sensitive matter then in this case this will apply to demo demo this all okay so have to be you can you can also do this kind of configuration as well okay mm, yeah so we we, we talked about like uh, how to create different different standards right and how how we splunk will be determining the final value based on the priority and other stuff okay we also see the uh, how we can do the case sensitive and case insensitive search as well okay so this is this are all this is the like overall basic levels of um, things you can do in props.com so we, we just only talk about the functional aspect of props.com right in the next video uh, what we'll try to see is now different different use cases for props.com so we'll see how based on how uh, different different phases of the data processing how different different configurations works just like suppose you want to do the create a rule for event breaking right so in that case you have to do it for the parsing phase we'll see how to do that one as well okay for now see you in next video